Hi, and welcome to another episode of Ask Jeff and Lauren, where we answer your questions about the double bass. And I'm joined by the amazing Lauren Pierce. Um, hi, Lauren, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic, actually. Thanks. I'm really pleased because we've got a question about intonation. And I really want to hear your thoughts because I don't think there's a bass player alive who doesn't spend most of his time thinking about intonation. Oh, you know, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's like an ongoing thing, isn't it, really? Okay. Anyway, Michael, um, and this is our friend Michael Herman, a member of the study group. And I've met him as well. And yeah, I know that you're friends with him too. So Absolutely. Michael's got a question for us. And he says, I've got another question. And if I'm overactive, please tell me to slow down. Uh, but that's fine. <laughs> Never. No, you know, more questions than Mary. Um, and he's from a bass guitar background where he hasn't had to worry about intonation. But at the minute, I'll just cut it short. He's basically saying that he's spending too much time focusing on the tuner and, you know, and whether mm. he's exactly in tune and he doesn't, and that kind of holds him back from moving forward. So, you know, how do you know when your intonation is close enough and you're ready to move on? Um, it's a really great, great question, Michael. And um, yeah, absolutely. So, what are your thoughts, uh, Lauren, with uh, with intonation? Does it? I mean, I have a lot of thoughts. It's, it's a a, such feeling. a massive. <laughs> it's such a huge topic, it isn't is, it? Yeah, but I mean, I think essentially what he's asking is not how do I play in tune. It's yeah. how do I um, get that to be more consistent, and how do I, you know, not focus so much of my time on it, which I think is a great hmm. question, and. Um, you know, I think the first thing is just consistency, you know, doing it every day. Uh, I warm up with a slow scale every single day, as well as the shifting drills or the vomit exercise, as they're so mm. affectionately known as. Um, and those are technique exercises and warm ups, really, but um, also intonation exercises, you know. And so I practice my slow scales and my shifting drills with the drone on. And so I am practicing and kind of warming up my ears and also practicing intonation. Mm. But so you have that. And I'm a big proponent of, you know, working on whatever technique you want to work on, you know, working on the thing at the time and focusing just on that as much energy as you can with those exercises. You're going to be thinking about other things, too, but focus on the thing and then let it go. But you can't do that so much with intonation um, and so when you're learning a new piece of music, uh, you know, I'm constantly thinking about intonation and I'm making sure that I'm in tune and everything, but I don't focus as much energy. I don't worry too much if I play slightly out of tune when I'm first picking up the piece, when I'm first getting my fingers down, getting used to the fingerings and the bowings, um, and learning the notes, I kind of forgive myself a little bit because I'm just trying to figure out the whole mapping of the piece. And that's part of playing in tune, I think, is knowing where your finger is going to be put down and mm. what finger is, is going to be put down. And if you don't know that, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know what finger you're using, all of that, then it's harder to play in tune and you're going to be less consistent. But after that, when I start to grasp the piece a little bit better and I generally... Um, you know, I don't have the piece memorized necessarily, but I know the piece pretty well. Um, I at least know uh, I'm comfortable with the fingerings. I'm comfortable with where the lines are going. Um, I think that you'll you'll know when this is. Then I start doing intonation practice. And in that case, for fast passages, I mean, it's it's tough with intonation because you can practice slowly, but then you have to move on at some point. So I'm I'm working a lot on um, Mozart. 35 fourth movement um and it's really really fast and it's in d so i put the drone on d i practice it slowly and i keep that drone on all the way until i get to the actual tempo but at that point it's really just like okay so in general <laughs> was i in tune you know um and if i hear something i do a lot of repetitions in my practice if i hear something that's out then I'll go back and, and figure out what that was, especially if there's a pattern in that. And so I, I hope I'm not rambling too much. All I'm trying to say is that, you know, intonation practice should be practiced isolated, like with the warm up I was talking about. But then also when you get more comfortable with the music, um, you know, the, the big thing is patterns. I think if you stop every single time you play one note out of tune, mm. then you're going to go, you're, you're going to go crazy. If you play an F sharp out of tune once, then figure out like, okay, did that happen for a reason or what? But if it's an isolated incident, 
then you don't need to put as much effort, I don't think, as if every single time you've played it, that F sharp to, let's say, the G and the next bar is out of tune. Okay, that's a pattern I'm recognizing. What's going on? Is it that I'm misinterpreting the spacing between the shifts? Is it that I'm misinterpreting the spacing between my two fingers? What's going on there? So I hope that this helps a little bit. I feel like I just sort of word vomited all over, but um, this is something that we think about all the time. And like you said, there's no bass player alive that doesn't think about it. You know, some of the best bass players, the Bossa Nova Quartet I'm playing with now, a, a huge part of our rehearsals is intonation. It's a massive issue. It's, so. it's like a kind of fitness level, isn't it? You know, you, you, you're mm-hmm. always working on it and you always have those kind of good days Absolutely. and bad days. And, and as long as you're kind of practicing intelligently, then you'll be fine. You know, if you're isolating mm-hmm. the shifts that are causing you the problem, if you're identifying the string crossing that's causing you the problem or the, you know, changing the fingerings to, to make it more... Pl- right. Um, you well, know, make- and along those same lines too, don't forget that it's a, it's a trajectory, you know, so mm. you want to pay attention to that. It's like when you... Um, are trying to lose weight or um, when you're trying to gain muscle or something mm. weighing yourself every single day is probably the worst way to measure progress because mm. it's, it doesn't make any sense at all it fluctuates but if you're looking at those tiny numbers and you're like I hate that this day I'm three pounds heavier than I was before then you're not going to get as clear a vision but if you look at the overall trajectory if you're consistently going upward then you know okay i'm probably eating too many donuts maybe (laughs) and if you're constantly going downward then that you know signals that you're doing a good thing and i think with intonation it's not as clear Mm. as with the numbers on the scale but you can still measure that by recording yourself and um, yeah i mean michael mentions using a tuner as well and i think maybe you, you know maybe you shouldn't be using it as much michael because if you're putting all your focus into the tuner you know it's i mean i don't tend to practice very much with the tuner but i do uh, mm. have, you know it is a useful tool in for mm. some circumstances it's uh, i a, always use the tuner i have it on 100 percent of the time when do, i practice do you find that you get too just dist- i mean like, i just wondered whether it could be that michael's getting um it, uh, it might be it might be that he's getting too distracted because he's really focused on it it's I almost like a sort of game that. you want to hit the, the target of the- but yeah and with me i'm again i'm just looking at bigger picture and when i right. do isolate and i'm you know looking at a measure that i've consistently not gotten in tune or i'm mm. trying to really focus on then i'll either use the drone if i can't use the drone because it's a weird passage key wise then mm. i'll use the tuner and i'll focus all my energy on it but it's just in general i have it on for those quick checks but mm. I, th- I think i agree with you you know maybe don't focus all of your energy on it if po- and if it is that you can't have it on then maybe you know and Take mix it, it, mix it up as well. It might, it might be that you want to yeah. just, you know, put it away for a couple of weeks and see how that affects mm-hmm. your your tuning. And right. I think um, it's definitely one of those things that when you start to, it, it can almost be a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy when you focus so much on the technique and the small things that you lose, you know, your, your ability to be more expressive. And um, right. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on there, Michael. So hopefully, we've, you know, I'm sure we haven't answered your question, but we've probably given you some things to think about. Yeah, uh, right. And right. that's what this is all about. And if anyone else would like to join the conversation, please just leave a comment below the video. We're always up for chatting, you know, exploring new ideas, whether you agree with us or not, just, you know, come and join us and um, it would be great to learn more about uh, playing in tune. That's something I'm always trying to do. Um <laughs> And on that note, I think we're going to say goodbye. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for joining me, Lauren, and we'll see everybody next time.